Good afternoon, everybody. I think it's actually 20 minutes, and I'm, we're already starting a bit late, and I'm going to ask Paul to make sure the bar doesn't open um, too quickly, otherwise we'll lose people. But um, my name's Duncan McLeod, and I'm, um, I'm standing in for Jeff Passmore, who was unable to uh, travel here at the last minute, and many of you will know him. He runs the very successful um, annual Scaling Up Bioeconomy Conference in Canada. It's the eighth one this November and he asked me to pass on his regards and try and get as many of you as possible to get to Ottawa in November. So today's discussion is about scaling up um, the, the journey, textbook versus reality, I think that's what it said. This, of course, is about the path to commercialization, which we all want and we all need. Um, my background is second, third generation biofuels, hydrogen fuel cells and things like that, so large scale global industrial, um, we don't necessarily need that global scale on everything, but we do need to turn the ideas that perhaps begin at the laboratory branch into a business. So we have to be realistic about customers, demand, costs, prices, technical viability, competition, timelines, etc. And if you want finance and funding, you have to tell your story effectively. So we're lucky to have four esteemed um, people on the panel, and if you read the brief on this, uh, the idea was that they represented different stages in, in the process of commercialization. So, a startup company, which is Cafe, um, a research and development provider, which is Senair from Spain, a supplier, and that's a rather simplistic word <laughs> for Alpha Laval, and um, financing or venturing, uh, which is Adidas. And um, what I've decided to do, first of all, I'd like to ask our four panels, uh, panelists to introduce themselves, talk about, a little about their business, their role in the business, and where they think they fit in the scaling up commercialization process. And I'm going to start with um, Goizeder, I think, in Sener, if that's okay. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. This is Goizeder from Sener. Sener is the National Renewable Energy Center of Spain, and I'm coming particularly from our biorefinery, which is the Bio2C. Okay, so in the Bio2C, what we are aiming to do is to support the industry, the sector, and of course the startups <coughs> with the commercialization of their product, so that uh, we have an upscaling plant for a few liters up to several cubic meters, where we are working in different processes, such as thermochemical and biochemical processes. Today we are more here in the biochemical ones. So we try to support the industry, not only in those uh, trials, but in the, uh, providing a whole solution, optimizing the, the product, optimizing the processes, and somehow uh, going through that valley of death that uh, sometimes is a key point in the commercialization process. Thank you, um, Anne-Marie from Alpha Laval. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Anne-Marie de Mouy. Uh, I work for Alpha Laval. And uh, Alpha Laval is a big company, uh, the equipment supplier. <laughs> and uh, we are uh, all over industries in the world with 20,000 people around the, the globe, I would say. And I'm... Uh, um, the business developer for clean technologies, and clean technologies mean everything around energy optimization, circularity, and uh, of course clean uh, technologies and clean energy. And there um, I work um, in a task force which is um, supporting um, business development, process development, and scaling up. Thank you. Uh, next, Caro from Adidas. Hi, hello everyone. Um, so I don't think that I need to explain what Adidas is actually doing, but maybe a little bit about myself and my, my experience. So um, I have worked for an NGO in Peru, have worked for the Boston Consulting Group, and now also for Adidas, starting actually in the sustainability strategy department, where I looked a lot at new circular business models, working also directly with startups to see how to integrate them into our business. 
and now moved to the corporate venturing side. So there again, seeing the, the struggles of many companies on, on the one hand, how to, to cope working with such a big corporate such as Adidas and also really bringing their, their products to, to the market. And I'm happy to share my experience. I think the discussion actually on the branding was, was a really interesting one because we see that at the end, if you look at the end customer, it is a different story when, when being in, in a bubble of sustainability like-minded people or really into the mass market. So excited to be part of this panel discussion. Thank you, Karen. And finally, Marie-Claire with Cafe Inc. Yeah, yeah. Cafe Inc. Is, um, is the real startup here. We are only with six people. We just hired the seventh one for this summer. Um, Cafe Inc. is a startup company that transfers um, um, coffee waste into new ingredients. Uh, so we extract coffee oil for the cosmetic uh, industry. We are able to collect the coffee colorants for textile dyeing. And uh, we have the coffee blocks, which is like the byproduct that we have that we can use for building materials or also the scrub in, cosmetic, um, in the cosmetic industry. Uh, and we're working on other components to extract from the, um, from the coffee waste. Um, and I work there as the CEO of the company. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask uh, a question for all four um, panelists in a slightly different order. So this time, um, it's more about whether they had a, a textbook or a role model or an example that they had been able to apply or influence them. Um, in their journey and what um, milestones they felt were critical. And I'm going to ask Anne-Marie first. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I think um, I, I can only emphasize the presentation before um, from Brand when um, it was say you do not have to act as a supplier. And I think that was a very spot-on comment, because I can just project it in the way I work today. So as a, I would say, um, equipment supply, as we are marked, I'm actually working much more on the conversion of technology. So I do have to work out my comfort zone. And that's a true uh, difference in a company where you have to deliver, execute big manufacturing, 40 factories over the world. You have to deliver. But we have taken that journey in order to support, because we understand that um, it's great to have ideas, but they need to be feasible and commercially feasible. And that's where we have came out of our comfort zone and not only uh, come to the market as an equipment and a very good equipment supplier, but just going on the technology curve and just go backwards and work with research. I work a lot with Sinner as an example or TNO or different, you know, developing process. And actually the value of our company is really the optimization of the process. That's where we are good at. And I think, you know, as a yeah, projection, personally, this is the test that we have taken within Alpha Laval in our clean technology group. Thank you. So that same question about role models or textbooks, I'm going to ask Poizida, maybe on Sene, if you have any thoughts about that. Yeah, I would say that as a research center, one of the main uh, roles that we need to keep in mind is to be open-minded. Yeah, open-minded to the customer that we have uh, with us and how we can accompany this through all the pathway to success and to commercialization. Understand if we are working with a big industry, with a startup, with an industry that they already have done their own R&D, and each of uh, those will need and needs a different kind of support and uh, different, different kind of uh, behavior of, on our side. Because, uh, for example, when we are working with uh, 
startups. They might need uh, more support in the part of maybe of the optimization or in the part of the upscaling. <coughs> it's very important for them to be with us in the trials and to learn how a demo plant is working and how their future commercial plant will look like. While, for example, if we are working with a big company and industry, they all have they already have those problems solved, but they need new ideas that maybe their own research uh, groups are not uh, are not solving at the moment or need another kind of uh, networking so i think that open minded is like one of the of the keys thank you so caro i think you were in consulting so maybe this question has a slightly different answer so the idea of a of a textbook or a role model or a, a framework that yeah. you've borrowed from somewhere any thoughts so, I mean, I think consultants, uh, or at least the image of consultants is that they use a lot of textbook and, and just apply it again and again. I would need to say when it comes to the scale-up journey, there is no textbook solution. At least I haven't seen one that really works for, for everyone. Just because every journey is unique and really dependent also on a lot of external factors that you cannot influence at the end of the day. I mean, looking also on the financing part, what is the environment at, at this point in time, depends not on your startup, it just depends on so many macroeconomic factors. And based on that, you need to decide, okay, can I scale up at this point in time really quickly, or do I need to wait? Nevertheless, I think there are certain aspects that, that are important for, for, the, for the journey or along the journey that, that the startup can, can look at. One of them, at least, that I have seen is, is crucial is to create points of success early on and be sure that everyone really agrees that this is a measure of success. Because that is also one, one of the learnings that only if, if you think that this, this is a key success factor and so that everyone agrees, it, it's not necessarily how your key, stables, key stakeholders would also define success. So, um, for example... Are these formal milestones? I, wouldn't, I would say every company should set their, their own formal okay. milestones and then determine what they would actually mean. And especially when looking at new business models, I mean, for circular business models, is it really the number of products that you sold or the numbers of products that you have taken back? And I mean, these two key KPIs can have a completely different way of, of optimizing your business model. And then you need to be sure, okay, what does success look like? What does it mean? And, and how do we then go, go about that? So I think um, there are milestones, but really independent for each, uh, each startup and, and each uh, yeah, technology to scale. So nothing that you can just like tick the box and be, this is the textbook solution, just apply it. Finally, Marie Claire, <laughs> and I think I've, I've found out earlier, Marie Claire worked for Unilever. So that's quite a, a, a change to be in a startup that's got what, half a dozen people. But again, the same question about textbooks and role models. Yeah, that's more, a nice bridge, actually, because um, um, at Unilever was my, my first job. And we really learned how to get from uh, a consumer or a customer insight and develop a product or a concept um, from that direction. And now I'm in the waste management and we actually have a waste product or we have a waste and we make products out of it and with those products we're looking into what kind of customer or consumer benefits are, are insights do we have that we fulfill with our products at the moment and i think that's for us but i think for uh, many startups and even for the corporates is what is the real customer um, insight or the customer need that you are filling with your product or with your concept. Um, so that's our main um, milestone for the moment, next to all the like R&D challenges and all the challenges that we have with a startup every day. Um, I think that's the key solution where we, where we are gonna make the success. And as a textbook, uh, I, after a Unilever, I have worked, I have had my own company, my, um, my own startup, and I use a lot the book uh, Scaling Up of Fern Harnish, and it helps a lot with a lot of steps that, um, that you go through in this, and it's like a, it has a lot of um, handouts and manuals that you could use. One of them is like the um, one-pager strategic plan, which is a really useful tool 
to get all the well, one of them is the like the um, the success factor that you have all together know what your uh, what your success is for this quarter and then celebrate the success if you finally reach the target because that's I think there's so many uh, especially in the start there's so many you have so many things in your head what you need to do that you forget all the the wins that you do along the way hmm. um, and it's very good to look back and to celebrate the things that you reach already although you're not there yet because it's a long way thank you i warned three of the panelists i couldn't find the other one that i was going to ask a question that you might not ask if this conference was in the united states which is i want to ask you have you made any mistakes and I was told, please don't ask it that way. <laughs> please, can you ask about lessons learned? Um, because I think sometimes Sorry. those are the most valuable experiences people have. So I think I'll give Kara that to kick <laughs> off with. Um, yes. So what I, when you asked me before, what I was, was thinking about is um, one circle of business model that, that we launched within Adidas. Actually, uh, I'm worrying it. Uh, we, we noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all branded, um, which is a issue that is fully recyclable, only one material. Uh, the collection is called Made to be Remade. And although I'm super convinced of, of the concept, making it fully recyclable, taking it back our own, working together with the recyclers, from, from this, from a textbook perspective, for me, this was really like the, the example of circular economy. But then when going into the market, we, we realized the consumer doesn't understand the product as much as everyone in the sustainability field. So going out there, talking then directly to, to the end consumer and really seeing, I mean, especially when they scan like the product pages with an Adidas side, they have two seconds, maybe five seconds that they spend. They don't get such a complicated concept that quickly. So for us or for me, then the learning is to really talk also to the end customer, not only to our internal business units that, that are selling the product, and really understanding what are their needs, how can we educate them, how can we take them along the journey, how can we make them understand what are really the benefits. So going out of our sustainability bubble, let's say that way, and, and talking to, to people who are maybe not normally talking to, I think that has been a key learning to, to really then understand what are the challenges and how we can overcome them quickly. Thank you. Oizera, do you want to have a go at that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, on behalf of Senera, I could say like one of the most important lessons learned is to make our customers also understand that a skilling process is long and sometimes it's costly, and we all need to understand that, that we cannot promise that one a technology has been validated, for example, at the lab stage, and although it has uh, really good results and yields, etc., that once when we are going uh, piloting or demo scale, that it's behaving the same way. And we all need to understand, and the customers need to understand, that that is also part of the research and development process. And until we go full scale, we will need to make different pilotings. They will need to be there with us, working and learning on the process for when they go full scale. We will need to take uh, many uh, data from the processes to go for uh, techno-economical techno assessments, environmental assessments, and maybe rethink if the process somehow need, needs to be uh, readjusted, or some parameters need to be somehow uh, properly, uh, um, yeah, um, properly um, yeah, adjust it somehow so that like the whole uh, picture is working well. Yeah, this is something that sometimes when we have the technology at lab scale, uh, we think that okay, uh, that okay, piloting and going demo is something straightforward. And once we have done it one time, it will success. And it's something that it's nearly happened in no time, and it's very difficult to happen. So we need to know that it's a long journey from uh, lower TRLs until uh, commercial scale, and we need to be patient and work together for that. Thank you. Um, Marie Claire, you got one? Yeah, well, I think I'd like to add the, a bit of the same that I was thinking about, that you sometimes just have to start, although it's not like the, the best 
um, product and it all fits together. But if you just go to the market and get feedback of your customers or your consumers that you can, it helps yourself um, getting the picture more um, right and it helps you uh, back to the innovation and to optimization. So you're not waiting for perfection before you get yeah, started. Yeah. You're basically near enough and you say, let's... Okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, because if you all will wait... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll never start. No. Anne-Marie? <laughs> <laughs> Lessons learned from a personal or company side? <laughs> Lessons learned a lot, personally. I have the whole day. Um, <clears throat> no, as I said already, from a company perspective, lessons learned, I think... Um, we, as Alpha Laval, we have, I think, 140 years. We are, we actually have our 140th birthday this year. Um, so we have been there for a while, uh, which is good. And um, the other part, I would say, we really need to look at the transformation journey. And uh, for us, as a big equipment manufacturer, it's kind of changing strategy. Um, so that's the reason why we have backed into the transformation and we have changed the way we are doing business today. So we are not only working with brand owners and end users and assets owners, but really working with uh, consultants, um, people who are really developing process in order to optimize, because that's where we think um, conversion of technology. So you need to think unconventionally, which is in our DNA, but to just drive mm -hmm. an whole organization with 20,000 people around, it's quite a challenging <laughs> yes. idea. And I like to be that disruptive factor in our company. Thank you. So one last, I'm going to ask each of the panelists just one last message for everybody, and then we'll have a couple of minutes of questions, I guess. So, Koizeda, just a, a message summing up something in the scaling up journey area? I think that one of the most important messages uh, we have of uh, our center and for the sector is that uh, let's cooperate together and let's take the value added that uh, other companies, uh, other institutions, they might have because the bioeconomy sector, I think that is comprehensive sector. We have our own challenges because all the feedstock that we manage, all the technologies that we are working with, and all the final products. So let's learn from each other and have a win-win uh, result. Thank you. Cara? Yeah, one thing that I was thinking about was to mention to not forget to look at all the externalities and also the bigger system that we're operating in. Because a lot of times, of course, when we're still on the pilot scale, we can we can adjust. There are not a big, big impacts, but once it is really scaled up, what are the other factors that your company is 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 influencing? So I mean I think we as humans have done this mistake a couple of times that we're just looking at certain aspects and not at the big picture and now we're in, in the situation that we're in. So for me, it would be for the future if we find solutions that we make sure even in a scaled up scenario, they're actually viable for us and sustainable for, for our planet in, in the long term. Thank you. And Marie? Ooh, that's a difficult one sometimes. No, I, I, I guess what I wanted to say is that, again, ideas, you will have brilliant ideas, but if they're not feasible and not commercial, there is a no-go. Okay. That's what I want to say. Okay. Yeah, I think the collaboration is a very important part uh, in this area of business. And um, I do see a lot of collaboration. Uh, and I think the, the step forward is that we um, uh, sometimes have, like, in the beginning, the price will be a bit higher so that we have the, um, yeah, the adaption and the, and the chance to to be in, the, in, in new products to, um, to really make the impact for the, for the future. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions from the floor? We've got a couple of minutes. I think the bar looks like it's too attractive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, please. You mentioned networking. Um, I saw in another presentation earlier today that um, the linear system is more supply chain one directional. 
but the circular economy um, and sustainability is really a network uh -huh. exercise, it's building the ecosystem. Do you have any comments on that? Is that a valid point? Is it about building a network and then finding yes. and advising each other to get along that path? Yeah, I work a lot on community engagement as an example. Because you, when you speak about li linear to circular, you speak about streams or materials. But the decision-making process is the same way. So it's not linear going from next gate to the other, but you have the decision-making process will be also circular. So you will need more stakeholders to come to a decision. And the learnings regarding upscaling as well, I should think. Indeed. Yeah, and, and I think that it's also important that as it covers many different sectors, we can be in the agro, in the forest, the chemical sectors, the biofuels, the bio-based products that are replacing so many fossil-based ones. I think that uh, if all that is uh, going through as one group, uh, that's the, the way to go. And maybe to add also collaborating with new partners that you haven't collaborated with before. I mean, for example, for us, if we look at circular business models, we have never collaborated with a waste management company, right? <laughs> Why? And now suddenly this, this becomes an important point. So like really going out there and seeing which are the new key stakeholders that you need to work with. I also like the presentation that we just had about the waste uh, management that you're just collecting information and understanding that what is invented that it needs to be um, adapted in their in a race company you can't it's, it's, it's also linked so much together in mm. the in the new world um, that i think the collaboration is really needed perhaps the rest of the questions can can be done over a drink <laughs> so paul if you're ready to go Thank you very much, ladies. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.